Hello, Tungsten Miner here. Uh, today I'm going to talk about using chisels and bits as one of the new mods that I was most looking forward to playing with. And as you can see here, I've been doing uh, quite a bit with it to try and make this uh, kind of old style turf house out of grass. Now I've got Optifine loaded, which allows the grass to draw on the sides like this. Uh, but as you can see, it doesn't quite work for uh, chisels and bits, which uses the original texture. That's all right. It still looks pretty decent. And uh, you know, here you can see I went into a drawing program and just drew an oval at the same scale that this would be in, and then came in and duplicated all the chisels and bits pieces. So you can see it's made up of these three little chunks here, and that gives me uh, that rounded look. Around the door here, I've uh, just taken a 1 16th <laughs> layer and made kind of a door frame. So you can see when the door is opened, I did the same thing. So this is a chiseled rock where I took off just one layer and added one layer of wood. And then added a lintel over the door there. Uh, the rest of the house on the inside is just uh, typical Minecraft stuff. These little bushes here, uh, I did a two by two in the center of that block, and then just started adding on leaf blocks until I found the shape that I wanted. Uh, and so made these little bushes next door to the, the actual door here. And then finally, the last thing to look at over here, um, yeah, sadly, all the crops have died here because we've gone through winter, and part of Tough as Nails is that um, in the wintertime, all of your crops will die and you'll have to replant them in the spring and so you're left with just dead crops here on the ground but anyway you can see uh, here I've made this stone post as roughly a cylindrical post and then added spruce wood planks in just a 1 16th layer across and that gets me these planks over here so now I'm going to take a quick trip back over to where I'm making my main house. So remember, this is on a server, and so this is uh, for folks who are just joining the server as a temporary place to hang out and kind of get some supplies before they run off into the wild. So I'm going to go find my horse and head back over to my main place now. All right, so here I am standing overlooking uh, what is going to be my new home. So I've uh, found this nice flat plain here, which borders on uh, this mountain ridge. And I can look down the other side, and it kind of goes off down towards the sea. There's a village a little ways over there. Uh, obviously, I've got some pigs and cows and all sorts of other creatures living up here, which eventually I'll come around to uh, making some good use out of. But anyway, let's get a little closer. One thing you'll notice is that rushing wind kind of dies down as I get down into the valley. It's another dynamic surroundings thing. Okay, so in my typical fashion, I've gone ahead and laid out the rough outline of the place using plain dirt. And then uh, I'm going to go in and try to build a single section and get a sense of what materials exactly do I want to use and how do I want everything to come together. So as you can see, I'm not doing things with plain vanilla blocks. I'm using chisels and bits pretty extensively. I'm going to see how it works to make more or less the entire facade of the house out of them and then use plain uh, one meter sized bricks only in cases where I actually want to fill in the whole thing. So let me get a little closer here and you can see the details. So again, I've got a little bit of a lintel. I'm using limestone, which is uh, one of the underground biomes constructs uh, materials. And then the walls are made out of gneiss, uh, bricks. So you dig up your gneiss, you smelt it back into smooth stone, and then uh, a two by two will get you bricks. And then uh, taking it through chisel will get you uh, what I've got here. So here we are in this room. This is just a plain old regular Minecraft door. Works fine. Here, I've carved off the sides in order to make that smooth uh, kind of transition to the door so you don't have that hard corner. These are just plain old jungle planks, and these are plain old niece bricks. But in order to achieve the effect of the wall being kind of uh, not all the way thick, you know, not one meter thick, 
I've used chisels and bits to make a wall that's only this thick by placing things down again. And as you noticed, I was able to use my pickaxe to just break off a chunk of the wall. And it's going to get treated just like a regular block, so it remembers what kind of block it was and what arrangement. And you can see as I face around, it changes its orientation. So it pretty much works just like any other kind of block. Here, let me take a quick nap. Okay, yeah, so they work pretty much just like a regular block once you've made them. Uh, this was made by using, uh, here, let me actually just do a quick demonstration here. So uh, what I'm doing is I've selected some bits that I've made. Um, my bit bag is full at the moment, so I need to uh, either make a new one or do something else uh, to demonstrate how that works. But uh, let me grab, you know, here's the, uh, the glass. So to make the bits, here we'll just do this really quickly. Um, you make yourself a chisel, and the uh, recipe for the chisel, uh, so I've got the chisel mod installed, which is the one that gives you lots of different textures, and I've got the chisels and bits mod installed, which is the one that gives you the tiny little blocks. So it's uh, sometimes a little confusing. This is the one you want. The recipe for these is to take um, whatever material you're making the chisel out of, so in this case, uh, cobblestone, and then a stick. So there's that one, there's iron, there's gold, there's diamond, and basically each of them has a different durability and allows you to break up a certain number of bits before the tool itself is broken and you have to make a new one. So having this guy, I now hold down my uh, left alt key, or for your Mac users, your left option key, and you get this little wheel menu. So you can decide what size piece the tool is going to work against. So in this case, it's just one single bit. That's a 1 16th chunk of a block. This is a whole line, a whole plane. This is a connected plane. So it's going to look and say, whatever surface you click on, let me continue to extend that. So let me demonstrate some of these to make it a little bit clear. Um, yeah, so when I'm carving blocks, this is going to carve off whatever I've selected. So uh, this allows you to carve off basically the whole block at once. And then if you've got some bits in hand, it allows you to place them down. And you get the same menu whether you're carving or placing. So I'll show this off with placing. So a single bit, I can just drop it down uh, anywhere I want by right-clicking as though I was placing a regular block. And so now I've got just a single tiny little chunk of glass there. I can then make a line, and whatever surface I'm pointing at, it's going to make a line on top of that spot. So there we go. Now I've got a line of glass right on top of that spot. Here I can make a plane. It will make a plane which encompasses whatever block I'm pointing at. And make a one a meter, one, one sixteenth of a meter tall chunk. Uh, if I want, I can keep going. So I can click plane again and plane again and plane again. And now that's a one quarter width block. If I click on one of the sides, I can extend that plane but it's going to be off into the next block. Now you see this didn't finish because I don't actually have enough bits of that blue stained glass in my bag. So let's talk about the bag for a second. Recipe is just take any kind of wool around any kind of bit. So you might want to start by making yourself a stone chisel in order to get yourself one of these bits and then surround it. And the way the bag works is uh, you drop it in your hotbar and then right click and it opens up the bag showing you all of the bits that you've got uh, and now if I hit um, I think it's shift it's going to just quickly show me you know it's going to expand those bits back into their full block so you can tell what they are a little bit better so you can see I've been doing a lot of construction and working and making lots of different things so I've got some spruce uh, and it remembers that this particular chunk of spruce is facing up and down so when I put the bits down it's going to borrow the textures from the up and down version of spruce wood. Planks, limestone, nice bricks, spruce wood planks, uh, more limestone, more jungle planks. So yeah, just whatever combination of stuff I happen to have. And as I make more bits, then they're going to wind up getting tossed in the bag. So if I just take these and drop them on the floor, when I walk close, they're going to get 
pulled into my inventory. If there's more than one stack's worth of a particular kind, the extras go in the bag. So you're always going to have one stack's worth wind up here, and the extras go over here. So you don't wind up with a jillion useless bricks in your inventory. I can also treat this like an inventory and just take any bits that I happen to have and move them back in there. So now no more bits in my inventory. Uh, so if I take this limestone, for example, we'll continue exploring uh, how this stuff works. Uh, so yeah, if I choose connected plane here, it's going to take this plane, the surface, which is that funny irregular shape there, and extend it by one more layer using the material I now have in hand, which of course is limestone instead of the blue stained glass. If I change to using, um, say, a single bit, I can make a little pattern here, right? Yeah, so let me fill in that little middle piece. And now if I change to connected uh, plane, I can extend just that three by three. And now if I wanna make it bigger sideways, I can connect it that way. So you can see how little bit by little bit, you can start making whatever kind of shapes you want. Uh, connected material means it's only going to extend the same material. So if I had two different materials, it would just pick the material that's there. Drawn region, this is a little interesting. Uh, let's do this. Yeah, so drawn region, now I'm gonna carve off a chunk of this. So I'm gonna say, I wanna carve off from here, and now I'm going to drag, holding down my left click button. And as I move it through this surface, you can see it's outlining a chunk. And when I let go, it's carved out the region that I dragged over in three dimensions. So you have to set yourself up to be able to go from surface to surface to surface. Um, so if I want, I can now carve off, say, this little layer over here. But now I, I set myself up badly, right? Because if I wanted to get that square chunk, I've not set myself up. So I'm just going to hit escape. Um, oops, I didn't mean to do that. So hold down option and I just hover over undo and then let go of option and it undoes the last thing I did. Now, undo is going to basically pretend as though you yourself are going to manually go do all the steps right now that would make it so that the last thing didn't happen. But what that means is you've gotta have the bits in your inventory to make the undo work if you're replacing bits, or you have to have a chisel with some durability left if you're gonna have to undo by carving something off. So in this case, the thing I did by accident was carve off. So an undo means I have to have those bits in my inventory and I happened to have them so everything was fine. But if I wanted to knock off a three by three chunk here, I can start here, go down three, over three. Now I can see, oh yeah, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, all good. And when I finally let go of my left click button, it carves off that three by three chunk from the corner there. Now let's say all of these things are things that I'm like, oh, well, I don't want these here at all. I can go click same material and then just left click and it scoops up the entire thing from that one meter chunk. And you notice those two separate pieces got all scooped up too because they happen to be within the same one meter block. Now here, I've got some limestone in this meter and I've got some glass. So when I click same material, it's gonna take all the limestone and then all the glass in that same one block. So now I've cleaned up all my stuff and everything is converted back into bits. And you'll notice I've got all of these kinds of bits now in my inventory where I didn't before. All right, next thing to talk about is uh, your templates. There's a couple of different kinds so let me make a little uh, sculpture here and talk about some of the other options. So over here, uh, I have options for making various size cubes that are snapped to grid and then the same size cubes that are not snapped to grid. So let's say I wanna make a one quarter sized cube. I can click there, I can click there. And now I've got those pieces. Now let's say what I want to do is duplicate this pattern. Maybe I want a tiled floor. So uh, here, let me grab uh, some limestone and it's going to remember my last setting so I don't have to change that again. And now I've got this nice little tile going for my floor. So I'm going to right click this guy. Uh, whoops, I think, yeah, let me 
<laughs> so what I did is I made this over the wrong tile boundary. So let me first get rid of that guy and then put that guy there and that guy there. If you happen to mess up with one of your uh, designs, you can just put it back on the crafting grid and clear it off. So now, as I right click this thing, it's remembered that whole set because all of that is within a one meter grid. Now, I can hold down uh, left alt again, and I have a couple of options. I can impose this on whatever block, so it's gonna carve off whatever doesn't match and put down what does match. I can replace whatever's there with what I've got. I can add whatever I've got, so this is basically replace and add, and this is just one or the other. Or I can put it down just like a regular block. So this makes it as though I had the block in hand, and I just wanna pop it down on the floor. Now I'm right clicking, click, 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 but nothing's happening. That's because I don't have enough of one of the kinds of these blocks. Uh, and if I look at my inventory, I can kind of figure out which one it is. Uh, let's see, so I've got limestone and I've got nice bricks, but not very many. I've just got one stack of each here. Let me double check my bag. And I've got lots of nice bricks, but very little limestone. So that's probably what's going on, is I don't have enough to reproduce that. Just a sec, let me take a nap here. And that's just what happens, is uh, it just it won't place the, the object down. But now you can see I've got this handy template here, which allows me to recreate that combination wherever I want. So as I was making this wall, for example, I, I didn't make the little uh, statue or you know the, the actual model many, many, many times. I made one of them once and then used this to make a copy and then plop, 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 just like any other block that I might happen to have. So it doesn't take a terrific long time to do things. Um, yeah, let's see, I don't need this guy anymore, so I can drop him in there, get him back again. Yeah, that's the basic essence of what um, I've learned so far about chisels and bits. I know there are, uh, let's see here. There we go. Uh, there are other tools in here that I haven't played with yet. Uh, the wrench, I guess, lets you rotate blocks that have already been placed. Uh, the saw allows you to cut things. I'm not exactly sure what that means. I've got a general notion of what cutting means, but I'm not sure what that would mean in this case. Uh, a tape measure I haven't played with yet, but I'm sure that'll be helpful. And then a chiseled fluid bit tank, which if I understand correctly, you can use a uh, chisel to pick up fluids and drop them in the tank. Um, maybe uh, you pour the fluids in the tank and then use the chisel to get them out again. I don't know, I'll play with that in a bit and figure out how that works. Anyway, so let's talk about this house uh, and its general design here. So as you can see, the house is largely circular. Um, actually, I'm gonna cheat just a bit so that I can show off the plan a little more easily. All right, so here we are, hard to see. But uh, in general, you can see that it's a circular house. I was uh, going around with my horse, just kind of scouting for locations, and I found uh, this nice little hillock here, and uh, it was roughly circular already. I did just a teeny tiny bit of grooming to make it more circular, and carved the top off to give myself a flat space to work on. So, you know, I made the circle around the outside and started contemplating what sorts of uh, patterns might go on the inside and what sorts of rooms and things uh, and uh, what the profile would look like. So the idea here is that you'll have an entranceway here, which goes all the way up to a skylight in the ceiling there with rooms off of both sides. So this will be a room. That's obviously a room. This will be a staircase. There's another staircase just over there. Uh, I have a couple of rooms here that will just pass through into rooms back here. And then these funny shaped rooms, I'll have to figure something out. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what to do with those yet. Uh, it's the problem of having circles. Uh, this will be another entrance hall, so it'll work basically the same way as the other one does. And then uh, as you go up the stairs here, you'll wind up in the upper floor. And you can see I've got another circular layer that's going to go around this side here. And uh, hopefully what that will do is give me some interesting upstairs rooms here that look out over what's going to wind up being just an open courtyard to the sky. 
And in the center here, I'm planning to make some kind of fountain. Uh, one of the things that I have to think about, as you can see, is uh, there's a little bit of snow here, but I'm in a shrubland biome, uh, which means I oughtn't to have to worry about snow at all. But since I've got um, Tough as Nails installed and the seasons change periodically, that means that a little while ago it was winter, and instead of raining, it snowed. And so I had a bunch of snow on the ground. When spring rolled around, the snow melted for the most part, except for those areas that were shadowed. See, this is not exposed to the sky, because I had another block just on top there. So uh, the snow built up and stayed in those areas, and I haven't gotten around to knocking it off yet. Anyway, um, back here, yeah, so you'll come into this main courtyard here. This is probably where I'll leave my horse and you know, whatever else. Over on this side, I decided to give myself some big machinery room. So this will be kind of open with uh, just these pillars in the center here. This will be kind of a convenience room for anything having to do with the big machinery rooms. Uh, this will probably be uh, maybe a crafting room or a storage room. Uh, I haven't quite decided. I need a big storage room somewhere, and this might be the best place for it. Uh, let's see what else. And then over here, um, we've got a bunch of more smaller rooms, uh, maybe bedrooms, maybe uh, mod specific kind of crafting rooms. You know, I could see having a deco craft room, uh, that kind of thing. Um, maybe a battery power, you know, storage room. We'll see. Uh, depends upon what all I need. You know, if I get into um, using the immersive engineering bottling plant, for example, I might have a bottling room that has all the supplies and stuff for doing that. Anyway, and then uh, up here, this will just be a kind of walkable terrace, and I'll make some kind of uh, border along the side here that will serve as a little fence that matches up. But one of the things I want to do here is to try and use chisels and bits to make it a much more sculpted and precise building. So you can see I've started the work here just as part of an experiment uh, to try and make it so that this glass follows the contour of the building precisely. And the way that I'm doing that, uh, I'm pause and drag over another program here, is using a program called Pixin. Uh, so I play on the Macintosh, and it's a very handy little program that allows you to do pixel-perfect drawing. And so what I did to start with is I made a file that was 64 by 64 pixels, and then used the oval tool in order to draw just an oval that's 64 by 64. And then I scaled up the drawing by 16 times and drew another circle that was inset by half of a pixel or half of a block onto what was already there. So now you can see the black is where I put down my, uh, my dirt blocks well, stone blocks over here, but dirt blocks for the most part, to define the outside area to make the rough circular shape of the base. But when it came to putting in the glass pane, I knew I wanted the glass pane to be 1 16th thick, or as thin as possible. And so using my drawing here, I went ahead and added this cyan line. And so as I've been working on it, I've gone through and, you know, line by line, put in all of these little dots, one by one by one, as a full line tall. So basically a one meter tall segment like you see here. Uh, and then this, uh, yeah, let me, oops, I'm already in creative mode. Uh, using these guys. I went ahead and uh, changed this to the line mode and then just started figuring out, okay, I need one, two, uh, whoops, let me undo that. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, whatever. Uh, all over and over and over and over again until I got uh, each meter one by one uh, figured out. Oh, and another handy feature. Um, if you want to place blocks down, you obviously have to have selected in hand the block you want to place. But if you happen in your inventory to also have a chisel, you can just left click using this block. So I can uh, put something down here 
and then left click again and get it all scooped back up. And it's basically going to pretend that you did that with the chisel that you have in your inventory. And you can see the chisel I have in my inventory is set to scoop up all the blocks of the same kind within that one meter cube. So I can make a mistake and just scoop the whole thing up again. But I do have to be careful. If that's not what I wanted, let's say if I wanted to pull off just one plane again, now I can do that because that's the chisel setting that I've got. Anyway, so far I am really liking chisels and bits. Um, my one fear, of course, is that uh, I'll get pretty far into this project and find that this is just way too detailed a model for rendering in Minecraft. Uh, you know, as you can see, my frame rate is down to about 35, 30 or so right now. Um, partly because I've got a render distance of 16 chunks, so I can see this nice mountain. Uh, when I had that turned off, it was a lot higher. But we'll see. Um, good experiment. Try and figure things out. Um, what else is going on? Uh, basically, for the moment, I'm focused on this building here, so I'm not focused too much on the area around. Uh, I've got a bunch of trees here, which are all Harvest Craft fruit trees, that I can keep myself alive. Uh, I've got a Harvest Craft apiary here, which obviously needs emptying. Uh, this is kind of fun. Har so Harvest Craft, um, I don't have forestry in this, unfortunately, because it's still a little too raw for this version of uh, this mod pack. So instead I decided to enable the forestry, uh, not the forestry, the Harvest Craft bees. Um, they don't do nearly as much as forestry does, but they give you some basic products. So you get honeycomb and you get wax and you can make candles and stuff out of it. So some of the stuff, but of course Harvest Craft has a lot of other great things. So you go find yourself a bee uh, by finding a natural hive and breaking it just with any old tool. That will yield a queen bee. You then make yourself an apiary, uh, which is a pretty straightforward recipe here. Just some uh, wood blocks and item frames. And then drop your bee inside. And she'll go ahead and start producing stuff like wax and honeycomb. Ultimately, uh, as you saw before, the bee will yield a grub. Um, I think most of the time, not absolutely 100% of the time. And then the body of the queen bee can be crafted into royal jelly, the two of them combined, and you get yourself a queen bee again. The process continues. You just have to attend to it once in a while. Uh, let me take a nap here. And that gets you uh, what you need as far as, you know, simple apiary sorts of products. Uh, what else to talk about? Yeah, I think that's probably about it for now. Uh, I'm going to continue on with the house. Um, my general approach for building large structures like this is to first get the rough outline and then pick one little section to fill in the architectural detail. Uh, so ceiling, floors, walls, uh, doorways, windows, um, archways, stairways, all of that sort of stuff. And uh, once I feel like I've got the style of the building down and how I'm going to approach various kinds of problems, it's just a matter of plugging away at doing the rest of the building. So um, my goal is going to be for this next time to work backwards from here along this wall, close in this room following the same principles as this one, and then finally build this staircase so I can get a sense of what staircases are going to look like. Uh, you can see this very, very crude notion of a spiral staircase right now. Um, hopefully by the next video, I'll have something a lot more sophisticated to look at. Anyway, uh, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to know when that next video is coming out, hit subscribe, and I will talk to you later.